Hi, everyone. Welcome to the August virtual lecture. I am Jean-Philippe, and I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Carla Gonzalez, who will be showing us how to use the link between Geoscience Analyst Pro and IOCAS index exploratory data analysis software commonly used in the mining industry. Please note that the lecture will be a little longer than usual, as this is a super interesting topic. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in a QA and a or raise your hand, though so Carla may wait till the end to answer the question. Just a reminder that this lecture is being recorded and will be available in our YouTube channel in the coming days. The floor is yours, Carla. All right, thanks JP. And uh, thank you everyone for coming. Hi everyone. So as JP mentioned, today we're gonna be looking at the link between Geoscience Analyst Pro and IOGAS. Um, and just for context, the data that we'll be using is in Flimflon, Manitoba, which is a VMS deposit. And we're going to be looking at three different examples. That'll be one with geochemistry data, then with geophysics data, and then on structural data. So we'll get started right away with that um, geochemistry data. So I'll just show you guys some de-surveyed points, which I have right here. And what this means is that we've created points kind of along the drill fault drill hole path at a given sampling interval. And those points have all those geochemical assays that were in those drill holes, like silver, aluminum oxide, et cetera. So now that we have the data in this format, we're ready to connect to IOGAS. So the first step to do that is gonna be to make sure you have IOGAS open. So I have it right here, open, check. So now the second step is gonna go to file and connect to IOGAS. Now it's gonna say connected to IOGAS on the top here in the viewport. The IOGAS panel should also get activated and tell me I'm connected. And same thing here in the console panel, I've got that connection status. Okay, and now the third step is gonna to be to open that link data in IOGAS. So I'll just arrange my windows and here I'll open link data. And I'll choose those geochemistry points that we were just looking at. Okay, so now on the top of, of IOGAS here, it's telling me GA, DDH, Geochem, that's good. And in the Geoscience Analyst side, it created a copy of my object. So here's my original one. And here I have a new folder, it's called IOGAS link. And it's got those GH, GA, DDH, Geochem uh, objects. And right now the color is all black. That's the, the default color. So the first thing we'll look at is how to uh, attribute some colors to this data using the attribute manager. So here I'll set the colors to vary according to magnesium oxide. And there it is. I'll split it into 10 equal ranges and I'll auto attribute that. So you'll see it split my data into those 10 equal ranges and that refreshed automatically in Geoscience Analyst. So I'm seeing that in 3D. Now I can hide any of these ranges by clicking on the, on the box right there or show it again. And that should refresh automatically. Um, if you look here in the IOGAS panel, um, you'll see a very similar table. So you've got our magnesium oxide ranges, the colors count. And we also have those slightly creepy eyes staring at us. Um, and so let's say we can click on these eyes and hide any of those ranges. And the other way around, if I'm interested in seeing like the high magnesium oxide, I can show only those selected. And so there's that high magnesium oxide in 3D. Okay, now we'll do the same thing. We'll attribute some shape. So I'll change the shape of the points according to my geology log and auto attribute. And you'll see that instantly reflected here in, in 3D. Um, now I can change any of these shapes. I can make this, let's say, squares. You'll see that here. And again, the IOGAS panel works the same here. I can select any of these units and view only that unit if I wanted to. And uh, just I'll add some size there. So I'll have the, the size of my points change according to my iron oxide. And there it is. I'll split that into quartiles and I'll auto attribute. And you'll see that reflected automatically right here. 
Great, so you also have the option for filters. We won't be looking at that right now, um, but right now we're looking at the magnesium oxide, our geology log and our iron all at once um, in 3D here. Now that's all super great, but we'll get a little bit uh, more detailed here. So our goal is gonna be to plot an alteration diagram. Um, and before we actually plot the diagram, we just gotta specify some column properties. So here I have all my columns assigned um, and here I'll just guess aliases. So what that's doing, it's, it's guessing the unit of my geochemical element so that if I'm gonna plot a diagram and that diagram requires a conversion, I would guess we'll do that conversion automatically in the background. And I'll just correct this one. Look like okay. And that looks fine. Great, so now I just wanna do some QAQC on this data before I really plot my diagram. So for that, I first have to select my variables and I'll just select all those aliased bears, variables right there. Click OK. And then I'll go to the data doctor. OK, so we're seeing we have some negative values, some nulls. Uh, maybe those negatives were just the, the below detection limit uh, from the lab, and it might cause some problems. So we're just going to choose the, the replacement value that I guess is suggesting. And so I'll replace all and apply. Great, so now we've assigned the color properties and our data should be well QAQC'd. We're ready to plot that diagram, which we have a bunch of different options here, but I'll go for an alteration box plot with total iron. Okay, and here we have the, the diagram. So it computed my alteration index in the x-axis and then in the y-axis, it calculated my chloride calcite pyrite index. And uh, just as a note that those columns are also, those, those data, they're also added as a column here in our data table in Geoscience Analyst. So there's AI and CCPI right there. Okay, so going back to the diagram here, um, we see that all our, our data points are, are colored uh, by our magnesium oxide still and all those graphics that we had set. Um, and you can right away see that the magnesium seems to be kind of increasing with our AI. That makes sense when you look at that, at that data, at that formula for AI. Okay, so now we'll actually replace the colors with the ones in this diagram by clicking on this handy button right here. Okay. And you should see those changes again instantaneously reflected in here in Geoscience Analyst so that we can look at all of our, um, our altered rocks or vice versa. We can look at just these least altered andesite basalts, least altered daysites, and least altered rhyolites. So we can see how these plot in the diagram and also in 3D. Okay, now let's take it one step further with this uh, alteration diagram example. Let's say I want to add another column here. I want to add a column for all those high alterations at points that are maybe a vector for my mineralization. So that would maybe be this area right here that's also called a, a chloride pyrite zone. So to do that, I'll go to the attribute manager and I'll add an attribute. And I'll just call it high alteration. Whoops. So there's my high alteration. Now I'll just draw a polygon. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start drawing a polygon. I'll move it around a bit. There you go. So all of those points are not part of my high alteration zone. And you can see that again, right away in, the, in 3D. So if I wanna look at only those, I can select just those. And here we're seeing that, that high alteration zone um, in 3D. Now, uh, if you have any geology data, you can show that as well. Let's say here I have a geological contact. So I can see how these are related to, to that contact. And you can see they seem to be pretty close to it and just below, which if I show the ore body surface that has been modeled, um, it's coincidentally just below that, that contact as well. 
If you have any like geophysical data, if you've done an inversion or something like that, you can also um, display that. And then you can see if there's any like geophysical signatures that are associated with this alteration zone. So that's a, that's the idea here. You can do you can combine the the analysis from IGAS with all of your geoscientific data in 3D. Okay, now going back to these points, let's say that I have finished my analysis. I am satisfied with the results. Um, so I want to disconnect from IGAS now. So to do that, I'll go to File, Disconnect from IGAS. And yeah, I'll keep a copy of my object. So what that means is that I can still look at these IOGAS graphics, even if I'm not connected to IOGAS at that moment. So if I were to share this workspace with a colleague and that colleague does not have IOGAS installed or they don't have access to a license at that moment, they can still visualize all of the work that we've done there. Great, and now let's say we wanna hide those IOGAS graphics. Um, you still have just your typical geoscience science graphics so you can look at that AI that was computed here and you can um, look at just those high values and you can do the same thing for CCPI. And again, now with Pro, we can also script these properties um, within Geoscience Analyst. Great, so that's actually the entire process from beginning to end on how to connect, visualize the data, create some diagrams and, and look at those results. Um, and now, if all's good, we'll go into the next example, which is a geophysics example. And I've already created a, an IOGAS file that I'll just have load while I set this up. So I don't need to save that. It'll just take a second. Oops, Whoops. we don't wanna do that. <laughs> Let's rearrange our windows here. And that. Okay, so now we're looking at some geophysical data that's very similar to the one that we were just looking at for geochemistry. So we've created points along four drill holes that had some geophysical logs. And in this drill holes, you have like density logs, you have thorium, uranium, you have some gamma total count. Um, and so we're gonna be looking at these drill holes in IOGAS. And again, this file is just opening. Um, it's actually super quick when I'm not on Zoom. So we'll just wait a couple more seconds. There you go. It's, it's really, really fast when you're not on Zoom. I think Zoom is just taking up all of my, uh, all of my computer. Um, but here you go. So we're looking at these four drill holes. Um, we've plot some, plotted some downhole plots. So you'll see that drill hole, that gamma total count. You can compare the different holes. Um, but in this case, we're gonna be focusing on this one hole, 4Q83. And we're gonna be applying an unsupervised learning technique. And that's the wave tessellation. That's also known as a scale space plot. So here I'll just enter my different fields. I'll choose my gamma log, my gamma total count. Um, I'll choose my drill hole and I can set any parameters. Yeah, and just in the interest of time, um, I did this just prior to the lecture. Um, so you can see here the results from that wave tessellation exercise. So what it did is that it picked the boundaries in my gamma log at a given scale. So it turned our downhole signal into an interpretable pattern that can be related to our geology. Okay, now we went to one step for, uh, further and we um, used the attribute manager and put the results from that wave tessellation exercise as the colors of the points. And so that's what we'll look at in 3D right now by connecting to IOGAS. There we are. Okay, so that's our drill hole points in 3D with those boundaries that our wave tessellation exercise picked up. And again, now that I have it here in 3D, I can compare it with a bunch of different data like faults and contacts, geophysics, etc. 
And I'll just show you the original drill hole for this data for Q83. And I'll zoom in and you'll see that I have the geology log painted right here. Um, and it's kind of a transparent cylinder. So right off the bat, you'll see that this boundary and gamma log may be associated with a geological contact. Um, and you can keep going down the hole and you'll see, okay, in this case, they didn't log any geological contacts, but maybe there's some faults or some veining or some other, um, other data that, that we can look at there and, and keep interpreting our data in 3D. Okay, so that's the example of the uh, geophysical uh, data. And now we'll look at one last one and that'll be uh, structural data. So right here in my folder, I have some structural elements.csv and I'll just drag and drop that into Geoscience Analyst to import. I can choose my X, Y, and Z. That looks good, let's click okay. Okay, so here are our structural measurements. You can see they were taken on the surface and they have different data. They have data like our strike and trend, our dip and plunge, and the structural code. Now, our goal um, in this example is gonna be to plot a stereo net. So um, in IAGAS, I've gotta open this link data. I'll open those structural elements right there. And again, this is instantaneous when I'm not on Zoom. Um, yeah, I'll keep a copy. Okay, great. So it created a copy of my object. We'll look just at, at this copy. And uh, then we'll set our, our stereo net settings. So here in structure, I'll go to stereo net. Um, I'll choose my dip plunge, my strike trend. The convention here is strike. Um, just for this example, to keep it simple, I'll only show the planes, but it can also show lines. And I'll also only show the poles. Again, just to keep it as, as simple as possible, but it can, it can show everything there. Okay, so here is our stereo net. Um, you also have access to rose plots and you can even kind of drag this around um, like you would back with your uh, transparent paper and your thumbtack. Um, so it's pretty neat. Um, now, if you squint your eyes and you're looking at the stereo net, you'll see there's a kind of cluster going on right here. So let's say I wanna see where this cluster of structural measurements is in 3D. Um, I can do that by going back to that attribute manager. So I'll just create a new attribute and I'll call it cluster. And then again, I'll draw a polygon and just select those points that I see kind of in that cluster like that. Perfect. So now I'm seeing the points that are in that cluster in 3D and I can look at just those like that. Great. Now there's tons of things that you can do with the stereo net. You can plot a, a density map um, and you can uh, show the contours as well. And then if I wanted to, I could make it so that the, the colors changed according to this density map. So that's pretty cool. But just again, to keep this example as simple as possible, um, I won't do that at the moment. I'll just uh, go to data and create a data column from color and I'll call it cluster. Okay, so now in Geoscience Analyst, I have this cluster column. So in order to visualize it, I'll just turn off the IOGAS graphics for a moment and then paint, uh, click on that paint bucket to look at cluster. So there's a binary property zero and one. Um, anything that's zero is outside the cluster. Anything that's one is inside it. So I'll just hide all the other points and look at just these ones. And now what I can do is that I can turn on my orientation visual parameter and uh, show them as tablets. And I'll just make these a little bit bigger. 
And here you go. So now you're seeing all the data points that are inside this one cluster that I had drawn. And I'm seeing them as, as 3D tablets, like property oriented in space. And again, if you have any geology data, I can throw all of this on right now. I can see how these relate to my geology map. Um, I can also see um, my faults in my geological context or anything else, any other data that I have on there. So again, the, the, the message here is that we can combine the pretty awesome um, exploratory data analysis that you have in IOGAS with the also super great visualization and communication tools that you have in Geoscience Analyst. And that's it. That's all I've got ready for today. Carla, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, for those who are in the lecture at the moment, feel free to type any questions you may have or raise your hand to ask them uh, using your voice. If we don't have any questions. So I think that uh, tells how good of a job Carla did at presenting uh, the link between Geoscience Science Analyst Pro and uh, iOS. Um, if you have any questions in the future, please don't hesitate to email us at support at neurogeoscience.com and we'll see you next month uh, at uh, Sean's O'Connor's lecture that will talk about uh, acoustic televiewer data visualization and interpretation using uh, geoscience analysts and Python. Thank you. Great. And uh, we oh. just got one question. Oh, we've got questions actually. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is IOGAS free? And I believe the answer to that is no. Uh, no, it's not free, but you do have a trial version if you want uh, to give it a test run. Yeah, and you can always contact Index for more details. Um, yeah. Oh, we do have another one. Uh, is there any way to create a mean orientation based on the data? Um, Inside IOGAS, you can surely do that. There's a bunch of interpretation tools that are available uh, in the right hand on the screen there in IOGAS. Oof. Go to the end. Uh, yeah, the Is it that one? Yep. Oh, there you go. Great. Um, all right. So it seems like that's it. So thank you everyone so much. <laughs>